Welcome to the NatFL channel. I know that I wrote an article titled Miami Dolphins, trading for Deshaun Watson would be terrible. I still stand by that article because people need to read my explanation of why it would be terrible for the Miami Dolphins to trade three first-round picks, starting quarterback Tua Tungavailoa and two starters on defense for Deshaun Watson. That is incredibly too much and would hurt the Dolphins more than it would help. Giving up too many assets would make no sense for Miami and they should not trade any of their starters on defense, especially Xavier Howard. If you can't understand that, then I really don't know what to say to you. If that is genuinely what the Texans want for Watson, I would hang up and revert back to my article explaining why that would be terrible. However, maybe it wouldn't cost as much as people are saying. Perhaps the deal for Watson wouldn't involve any Dolphins player other than Tungavailoa. And maybe it could involve another Texans player outside of Watson. Who? Well, this is where my football guy's guy mind has gone, and let me finish explaining before you tell me I'm an idiot. The deal that wouldn't be terrible for the Dolphins would be trading pick number 3, pick number 18, a 2022 first round pick, a 2022 third round pick, and Tungavailoa for Watson and Texans receiver Will Fuller. But Fuller is going to be an unrestricted free agent. Yes, so the Texans would sweeten the deal for the Dolphins and franchise tag and trade Fuller. This would not cost the Texans anything to do, and if I am Miami, I will make them do it just because Houston would be getting back for their own number 3 overall pick from the Laramie Tunsil deal. That would mean the Dolphins would add Watson and Fuller but still have the important day 2 picks, pick 36, pick 50, and pick 81. Miami just got rid of Kyle Van Noy to create almost $10 million in cap space, and it seems there are more releases, trades to come to save even more money. Miami would obviously add Watson's contract. They would have to sign Fuller to a long-term deal or let him play for the reportedly $16 million tag number via Spatrac, which isn't bad. According to Spatrac, Fuller's projected contract will be worth around $17 million per year. Even though there are some rumblings that Green Bay Packers running back Aaron Jones may get the franchise tag, I'm not buying it and would love to see Miami go hard to get him. If Miami could get Jones, I think the unpopular decision to bring back center Ted Karras on a cheap deal would also make too much sense. Yes, former Green Bay Packers center Corey Lindsley should be the Dolphins' number one priority, but not if the Dolphins are trading for Watson and Fuller and signing Jones, Miami would not be able to sign everybody. They would have to spend wisely, but I think spending on Watson, Fuller, and Jones would be the best bet. Envision the Dolphins starting skill positions on offense with Watson, Fuller, Jones, tight end Mike Jasicki, and wide receiver Devontae Parker. Then you could add the BPA at 36, which could end up being another piece to this impressive offense, as well as pick 50. If I am the Miami Dolphins, that is the deal I would send the Texans and the only deal I would send them. It's also worth noting that Watson's no-trade clause will be a significant factor in where he goes because he can just say, no, if a terrible team like the New York Jets tries to trade for him. It does feel like Miami is the best trade destination for him, but only for the right price, in my opinion. Watson is getting traded no matter how much the Texans say they aren't going to do it. It's just a matter of time, but for Houston, rebuilding with three first-round picks, a third-round pick, and Tungavailoa wouldn't be a terrible way to start. And for Miami, adding Watson and Fuller with other possibilities in free agency, Jones, and the three-day-two picks would be the farthest thing from terrible.